Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger here, and today we're going to give you a guide and a how to set up your masteries and what are some of the ones you're going to need for Season 4. With me today, I have my good friend Ranger14. Ranger, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at almost all the types of roles that you can play and all of the different pages you can have set up. So we're going to go ahead and jump right on in. We're going to start with our 80 carry or your marksman page, if you want to call it that. What we're going to do with that page is we're going to build it with a 21 in the offense, 9 in the defense, and 0 in utility. Ranger, do you want to help us out and let us know what we're taking in the offensive tree? Yeah, on the tier 1 offensive tree, we go double-edged sword. Again, you're playing range. You shouldn't be taking that much damage. So double-edged sword is a pretty safe way to increase your damage without taking too much more damage. Then you put the 4 points into Fury. 5% attack speed is always fantastic. And then the 1 point into Butcher because that extra 2 damage to minions and monsters just helps you CS long in the long term. Yes, it does. Next, going down one step from there, we're going to be moving on to Brute Force. Now, Brute Force is going to give you some attack damage at level 18. Very helpful. It'll just help scale throughout the game. And then moving over to Feast, we're going to be getting back a little bit of health and mana each time we kill a unit. On tier 3, we go 1 point to Martial Mastery. That's 5 attack damage. That's just really easy for 1 point. And then 3 into Executioner, because increased damage when a champion's below 50% is just amazing. The fact that it's 5% for only 3 points is a great boost in our damage. Moving on from there, going down, we're going to be picking up 3 points in Warlord. That's going to give us increased bonus attack damage by 5%, helping us scale through the game. Tier 5, we have the 3 points into Devastating Strikes. 6% armor and magic penetration is amazing. And then finally, for your 21st point, it's going to be Havoc. You're going to get 3% increased damage overall. Now, if we take a look at the defensive tree, at the very top, we're going to have Block giving us two points there, which is going to reduce incoming damage by, from basic attacks by two. And then we have Recovery, which is going to help us with a little bit of health every five seconds. And then tier two, we have the one point into Unyielding. Again, as a ranged champion, increased damage by all champions by one. It's just a really nice defensive boost. And then three points into Veteran Scars for the 36 health that you get for those points. And down below Veteran Scars in the third tier is going to be Juggernaut, which is going to give us 3% maximum health, just giving us a little bit of just extra health, which is nice to have for a champion that typically won't be building any health items. There's also a second style page you can take for your AD carries called what we like to call at least an ADC caster. And this may be someone similar to Ezreal or maybe a Corky. And this page is a little bit different in the offensive tree. You want to run us by what's different, Ranger? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we took the two points out of Warlord. And so we only have one of three now, but we're putting the point into spell weaving and blade weaving. Both of these benefit from you auto attacking and casting abilities. So that's just a nice little boost. And then we also took two points out of Veteran Scars and one point out of Juggernaut to put the three points on Meditation. This helps us contain our mana, and so we're able to use those abilities more in lane. The next Masteries page we're going to take a look at is, in fact, our AP casters in the mid lane, typically seen there. They can be obviously taken other places, but this is typically your AP mids. Someone like Ari, maybe someone like Morgana, champions like that. We're going to go ahead and cover their page. They're going to go with the typical page of 21-0. 9, 21 in the offense, and 9 in the utility. We're going to go ahead and start off in the offensive tree today and covering the top two. Ranger, you want to start us off? Yeah, so tier 1, we put the 4 points into sorcery because 5% cooldown reduction is amazing. We're casting abilities. And then we want that 1 point into butcher because, again, it's just helping us out kill the minions in our lane. Down in the next column, we have a couple different choices actually you can do. You can take expose weakness, which actually won't help you in lane, but will help your allies when attacking champions that you've dealt damage to. You can put a point into this and it will help your team and team fights overall. If you don't want this and you want to help yourself out in lane, you can put that point over into Feast and that will just help you out as you are in lane, getting that health and that mana. Then we're also going to take three points and put those into Mental Force, giving us ability power. In the next tier, in tier three, we have one point into spell weaving. Again, we're doing a lot of basic attacking with an AP champion, and that also just increases your spell damage overall. Then we have one point into arcane mastery because eight points in ability power is amazing, and then three points into executioner because, again, when a champion's below half health, we're doing 5% more damage. Down below that, we have one point into blade weaving, giving us even more damage, stacking up to three times for a maximum of 3% increased damage. And then over from there, we have three points in Archmage, which is going to give us 5% increased ability power. And then one point into dangerous game, killing an enemy restores 5% of your health and mana. And on tier 5, we have the one point arcane blade, so that our basic attacks do 5% of our ability power as well. And then down for our 21st point, we're going to always pick up that Havoc for that 3% increased damage. 
And over on utility for the tier one, we have the three points in meditation because mana regen is always nice. And then the one point into scout for just that increased range on trinket items. Down below that, we're going to be taking four more points, putting three of them into Summoner's Insight, which is going to reduce the cooldown of Summoner spells by 10%, and then one point into Strength of Spirit, one health regen every five seconds for every 300 maximum mana you have. And our final point, we're going to Tier 3 on Runic Affinity. This is basically so that your blue buff lasts a little bit longer and helps you out more in lane. Our next page we're going to move on to is what we like to call AP No Mana. And this is a very, very similar page. In fact, it takes the exact same 21 out of the offense as AP Mid. But the AP No Mana page is for a champion that doesn't use mana to cast abilities. Someone like Kennen who uses energy. So we don't need to get anything over in utility. We keep the offense the same. And instead, we move into the defensive tree. Ranger, do you want to take us through that tree? Yes, for sure. Uh, defensive, we put the two points into block and the two points into recovery. Block, again, is decreasing the damage you take from champion basic attacks, and recovery is the two health per five seconds just to help you stay in lane a little bit longer. Down below that, we have unyielding, which is going to help us out there by just taking reduced damage, and then next to it, we have veteran scars for the 36 health it will provide, and then right below that, juggernaut for that 3% maximum health. Basically, we don't need to worry about longer buff durations on blue because we don't need blue buff for the longer duration for the mana. Obviously, the cooldown reduction would be nice, but it's not necessary, so we might as well pick up a little bit of defense to help out while laning. The next two mastery pages that we're going to take a look at are, in fact, support pages, and they're two different ones for two different reasons. We're going to cover both of them, but first we're going to start off with what we like to call Support Classic. Now, Support Classic is a setup page that is for what we typically would think of as your just generic normal support that we've been seeing over the past few years for League of Legends. These are champions like Sona or Soraka or Tarek. And what we're going to be doing with these pages is a 0 9 21 page. Zero in the offense, we're not worried about that at all. We're going to get a little bit in the defense, and this is going to be normal to what we pretty much take. When you see 9 in defense, you're pretty much always going to take block, recovery, unyielding, Veterans Scars, and Juggernaut. All just very helpful little things to help you just with a little bit more durability and survivability while in lane and throughout the game. But in the utility is our 21, and we're going to talk about that. Ranger, do you want to start us off? All right, so over here on the utility tier one, we have the one point to Phase Walker. That one second recall is really nice to get back to base faster so you can get back to lane faster overall. Then we have the two points into Fleet of Foot. That's 1% increased movement speed and the one point into Scout. Now, the reason why we don't pick up the three in Meditation is we have no interest in the tier two and we're going to have regen from our items that we buy to go to lane anyways, as well as pots. Moving down to tier two, what we're going to do there is pick up three points into Summoner's Insight, giving us that cooldown reduction on the Summoner spells by 10%. And then moving far over to the right, we're going to get Alchemist, which is going to give us increased duration of pots and elixirs by 10%. On tier three utility, we put the three points into Greed because Greed is good. And then we have the one point over in Culinary Master because you want biscuits all game. This gives you an additional 20 health and 10 mana instantly when you use them and just makes your potions look really cool. Below that, we're going to be putting one point into Scavenger, which is going to give you gold each time an ally kills a nearby lane minion. This gold is good. It's more of it coming to you, and it's going to help you build quicker. Next to that, we'll be putting a point into Wealth, which will give us 40 bonus starting gold. Then over on the far right, two points in Inspiration, which is 10 experience every 10 seconds while near a higher level allied champion, which as a support is almost all the time. So it's going to help you stay up in level instead of falling behind throughout the game. Tier 5, we have the one point to Bandit. Bandit is what Pickpocket was in Season 3. This is going to give melee champions 15 gold on a champion kill or assist, and gives ranged champions 3 gold every time they hit an enemy champion. This is a much needed thing for support, so you can constantly have that gold income. And then we have 3 points into Intelligence, because 5% cooldown reduction and 10% off of activated items is amazing. And for our 21st point, we're going to be putting that into Wanderer, which is going to give you 5% movement speed while out of combat. It's just helpful for getting back to lane and maybe placing wards a little quicker. As for our second support page, what we like to do with this one, it's called Support Caster. And Support Caster is a little bit different than Support Classic. Basically, Support Caster is one of those supports you'll be taking to lane that will be dealing damage and also basically building damage alongside your ADC. What we're going to be doing with this page is a 10 in the offense, 0 in the defense, and 20 in the utility. And the little bit of changes in there, we're going to go ahead and start with those. Ranger, what's the differences we have in utility? Basically on utility, we took the one point out of Phase Walker and two points out of Fleet of Foot and put the three into Meditation. This is because we want the mana to be able to harass the enemy in lane. That's also why we took one point out of Summoner's Insight and put the one point into Strength of Spirit, because we want the health regen. When you 
deal poke, you should also receive poke. So it's important that you sustain yourself in lane. Then we also took the one point out of Wanderer because we want to put it over into offensive. Over in the offensive tree of support caster, what we're going to be doing there is taking some damage. We're going to put four points into sorcery, which is going to give us 5% cooldown reduction, which will help us out. We'll put one point into that exposed weakness, which will give us just more increased damage with those spells for our allies next to us, which we have one with us. So that's going to help them out. And then we'll put three points into mental force, giving us more ability power as we level up. Below, we're going to take a point and put that into spell weaving, basically damaging an enemy with a basic attack, increased spell damage, stacking up to 3%. Very nice while in this lane. And then one point into that arcane mastery for that 8 ability power. Typical supports you'll see taking this style of page will be champions like support Zyra and support Fiddlesticks. They're there to help support, but they're there to deal the damage that they can. So basically, when you're playing a champion that uses this rune page, let's say Zyra, spell weaving is really important that you constantly auto attack. This is going to proc your bandit, which is going to give you gold, and then also increase your spell weaving, and then you're going to cast an ability. The whole time you're in this lane, you're going to want to take advantage of the things you got in mastery. You're going to want to use your mana, you're going to want to take a little bit of damage to do damage, and all around, be aggressive in the lane. As for our next mastery page we're going to cover, what I like to call this page is my tanky jungler. What this jungler might be is someone like a Maokai, maybe a Nautilus, someone like that. Pretty tanky in the jungle. What we're going to be doing with their page is putting 0 in the offense, 21 in the defense, and 9 in the utility. We're going to go ahead and start off with what we've done in that defensive tree, starting at the top ranger, kick it off. Over here in the defensive tree, put the two points in the block and two into tough skin. Tough skin reduces the damage you take from neutral monsters, not lane minions. So it's useless in a lane, but amazing in the jungle. Down below that in the second tier, we're going to be putting a point into Unyielding, and then three points into Veteran Scars for that health, and then a point into Bladed Armor, taking basic attack damage from neutral monsters will cause them to bleed. So that's very helpful for them dying. Tier 3, we put the one point of Juggernaut, three into Hardiness, and three into Resistance. This gives us our flat armor and our flat magic resist. Below that in tier 4, there's actually nothing there at the moment. But below that in tier 5, we have Tenacious, which will give us armor and magic resist for each nearby enemy champion. And at the end, we have the one point of Legendary Guardian. Now, if you're going to play a jungler, say, Aatrox or Mundo, where you have a bunch of self-healing, we can take the point, the four points out of Tenacious, put three into Perseverance, and one into Second Wind. This is only if you're going to have some self-healing, lifesteal, or some spell vamp that's going to help you below 25%. And as for the utility tree for that tanky jungler, what you're going to be doing over there is putting nine points in that. You're going to start off by putting three points into fleet of foot for that movement speed, which is very helpful while moving around the jungle and for ganking. And then one point into scout, which increases that cast range of the trinket items by 15%. There you put the three points into summoner's insight, reducing the summoner spell cooldown, and one point into alchemist. And then finally, we're going to put one more point into Runic Affinity because that increased duration on those buffs is helpful for those ganks, so hopefully you'll still have them up. And having a longer duration on blue buff just really helps you clear a little bit faster. As for our next Masteries page, we're going to move on to our AD Junglers. What this page is, is very similar, but slightly different from our Tanky Junglers. Basically, we're going to be moving our points out of Utility and into our offensive side. These Junglers are going to be somebody maybe like Vi, Sin Xiao, champions like this. You're going to be building some damage on them, and they also have more damage output for those ganks and later on through the game. What we're going to be doing is 21 in that defense. It's the same 21 as the Tanky junglers but instead if you want to take those points and move them out of tenacious you can do that move it to second wind and perseverance if it makes sense for your playstyle or that champion but besides that we'll move on over to the nine in the offensive tree ranger what's going on in that top over here in the tier one of offense we have four points into sorcery that five percent cooldown reduction will help you clear the jungle a little bit faster overall because you're casting the abilities and then one point to butcher because two damage is amazing in the jungle down below that, we got Brute Force. We're going to pick up that attack damage as we scale throughout the game. And then right below that, one point into that Martial Mastery for that five attack damage, just helping us with damage overall. As for our next Mastery page, we're going to be moving on to the top lane. And this top lane page is really not actually too different than those AD junglers. The main difference is we're moving those points out of Tough Skin and Bladed Armor because they're not going to help you in the top. We're going to move those into Recovery for some health. And we're going to also move them down into Swiftness, to reduce the effectiveness of slows by 10%. Other than that, this page is the same as the AD jungler. 
those are some masteries pages to help you get started in season four it's a great place to start if you're just looking for some pages that are going to work up first there's a lot of champions really there's obviously a lot of other choices you could do if you're playing really specific champions and you want to just change things up obviously there's lots of little different things you could do one big thing we will always advise you to do with Masteries pages is pick what works for you. This is a guide. If these aren't perfect for your playstyle, pick something else in a different slot. Maybe move a point around if it's just going to work out for you better. This is not set in stone that this is the only way to do it. That's not how League works, luckily. Besides that, one other thing me and Ranger would like to recommend is talking it over with your friends. Talk about your mastery pages with your friends. Talk to them. See what they're doing. Mesh ideas off of each other. It will work out really well. That's why me and Ranger work together to do this. We can come up and come up with different ideas on why we put a point there instead of somewhere else. It's just a good way to learn what you might be doing wrong or what you're doing right and helping out your friends. Besides that, it'd be awesome if you guys could share this video with all your friends, especially with anyone who needs help with those masteries. Don't be afraid to also check out Ranger's channel. He does awesome League of Legends content over there. Or if you want to watch us in some of our high rank commentaries, he helps me out over there as well. But other than that, thanks for joining us today for these masteries and good luck out on the fields of justice. Or was forced out how to use his flash. This is not where you want to be for a team fight bigger in hip when you already have people healing and summoners down. Looks like Kale's gonna get grabbed by Thresh. Thresh will move in, drop the box as Cataclysm comes in as well. Renekton will kill Thresh immediately. Kale will fall to J4. 